So today's video is a warning for providers. And this video is specifically talking about the harms of benzodiazepines and prescribing benzodiazepines to your patients. So stay tuned. And so when it comes to prescribing benzodiazepines, it's important for you as a provider to understand that there are risks and harms and problems associated with this prescription. In fact, after just four weeks of use, at least 47% of patients who take benzodiazepines will experience some form of withdrawal when trying to attempt to get off of their benzodiazepine medication. It's also important to note that this is not just for benzodiazepines like Ativan, Valium, Clonopin, Xanax, etc., but also for those Z drugs like Zolpidem, Zolpiclon, so like your Ambien's, Lunesta, etc. It's also important to note that these withdrawal symptoms can actually be present while the patient is on the medication. And this is where those benzodiazepines, especially after long-term use, can lead to a tolerance, uh, withdrawal type of effect, or even interdosing withdrawal can occur while a patient is on a consistent dose of a benzodiazepine. The other thing to note is that these withdrawal symptoms can persist for months to even years, even after the person has stopped taking their medication or their benzodiazepine. And now before I get into more detail about the withdrawals, I wanna make sure that it's important that we're differentiating addiction from physical dependence. And I believe this is important because as providers, if we send our patients for treatment for addiction, it's a lot different than physical dependence. And because of that big difference, patients often suffer from this benzodiazepine harm because they're rapidly taken off of their medication if they're incorrectly diagnosed as having an addiction. And so an addiction is a primary chronic neurobiological disease state. It can consist of multiple factors like genetics, psychological factors, environmental factors, which can influence its development and manifestations. And more importantly, addiction is characterized by the behaviors that manifest as a result of the drug use. And these behaviors are things like impaired control over the drug use, cravings, very significant cravings to a point where you're using the drug despite the harms and despite all of the negative consequences that result from the drug use. And so that is really what differentiates addiction from physical dependence. Now, physical dependence is a state that results from a physical adaptation. And this is in response to repeated drug use that is taken as prescribed, and then symptoms can manifest as withdrawal symptoms, and like a withdrawal tolerance, which often happen with benzodiazepine prescriptions and prescribed use. And then these withdrawal symptoms will also occur when the person tries to stop the medication or stop their benzodiazepine, they will end up having a withdrawal symptom. Now the withdrawal can also occur and does occur with addiction as it does with dependence. But again, the differentiating factor is primarily the behaviors. So make sure when you're evaluating your patient for benzodiazepine dependence or addiction that you do so with this in mind and do not label them as being addicted as that can lead to different treatment modalities. A person who has physical dependence is really gonna require a slow taper and can often do this at home without having to go into a rehab or detox facility. So how do you know if your patient is in benzodiazepine withdrawal or even this intervention dosing withdrawal. Well, if your patient has been taking a benzodiazepine or a Z drug for at least four weeks or more, they're going to be a very high risk for developing withdrawal symptoms. An interdosing withdrawal symptoms is going to be assessed by asking your patient when the withdrawal symptoms are occurring. So if they're occurring at a certain time, meaning like right before the next dose is due, that is interdosing withdrawal. And so oftentimes patients with interdosing withdrawal will say, I'm having these symptoms that often occur around this time. And then when you ask them, well, when do you take your medication? And they'll say, well, one o'clock in the afternoon and their symptoms start around 
you know, 12 o'clock, then that is interdosing withdrawal. It's timed and it has a pattern to it. And now with these patients who have been on benzodiazepines for more than four weeks, it's important that when they come into your office, you're assessing them for withdrawal symptoms and for this physical dependence. And so let's talk about acute withdrawal versus chronic withdrawal. So acute withdrawal is what most providers know about. It's what happens when you abruptly take the medication away or right when you take the medication away, you have these symptoms. And it's typically related to those physical symptoms that last seven to 28 days after stopping the medication. And these symptoms are commonly what we would assess like in a rehab or detox facility like the CWA or the Clinical Institute for withdrawal assessment for alcohol use, for example. And these are things that could be like, you know, tremors, uh, shakiness, hallucinations, elevated blood pressure, and even seizures can all be a factor when we're looking at acute withdrawal symptoms. And these acute withdrawal symptoms can be life-threatening. And if someone is experiencing these, of course, they need emergency medical care. Now, chronic withdrawal symptoms, on the other hand, can last quite a long time, even after the patient has stopped taking their benzodiazepine. And as mentioned before, can even be occurring while the patient is taking their medication. And there are actually over 130 chronic withdrawal symptoms that have been identified with patients who are taking these benzodiazepines or even the Z drugs. And so we've categorized them here, and this is coming from the Alliance for Benzodiazepine Best Practices page. I'll make sure to link this down in the description for you if you're interested in looking more into this. But as you can see, there are a lot of symptoms that are attributed, and these are only specific ones that were highlighted in the benzodiazepines information for providers sheet that uh, patients are given to hand to you if they're experiencing benzodiazepine withdrawal. And so as you can see, the benzo withdrawal syndrome that can occur with patients that can be chronic or long lasting can be categorized as psychological symptoms, neurophysiologic or neuropsychological symptoms, and even somatic symptoms. And so it's important to make sure that you're assessing your patient for not only the acute withdrawal symptoms that can occur, but also these chronic and longer lasting lasting withdrawal symptoms because oftentimes if someone presents to you with any of these types of symptoms, they can get misdiagnosed as having a secondary condition. And so it's important that we're assessing for this with our patients who are on benzodiazepines. Another important thing to be aware of when it comes to the withdrawal is the term benzo-induced neurological dysfunction or BIND. And about 20% of benzodiazepine users are going to be at risk for this benzodiazepine induced neurological dysfunction. And this is a term that has come about in the literature very recently, which I'm gonna be describing in more detail in another video. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. However, this term encompasses a collection of neurological symptoms that are both physical and psychological that have been seen to be the consequence to this neuroadaptation or physical dependence state and or neurotoxicity or neurotoxic state that has been seen with benzodiazepine users. And it's important to note that these symptoms can also be present while the person is on the medication, while they're tapering the medication, and even after they've completed the taper of their medications. And so again, it's important that we're watching out for these symptoms as well. Another warning aside from these withdrawal symptoms, whether it's acute, chronic, or this benzo-induced neurological dysfunction, are the long-term consequences of benzodiazepine use in general, which I did go over in the video on the ugly truth about benzodiazepines. So if you missed that video, go ahead and check it out. However, I talk about those long-term consequences such as memory impairment, cognitive deficits, losing balance, and even rebound symptoms such as anxiety and insomnia that can occur. And all of these things collectively are warnings to providers before you prescribe those benzodiazepines to consider these things first. 
but I also want to leave you with some things that you can do about it. And so yes, we realize that benzodiazepine can cause harm, but we do now have the FDA warning and label that talks about this harm and even the protracted withdrawal symptoms, which is a part of that bind. And so what can we do as providers to be part of the solution versus part of the problem? So number one is educate yourself. So as a provider, it's important that you stay on top of this research, that you stay in the know-how about what's going on with benzodiazepines and all the new research coming about. I highly recommend considering even becoming a member of the Alliance for Benzodiazepine Best Practices, which has several levels of membership from professional to patient and advocate if you're not a provider, as well as corporate memberships. So consider that because with that membership, you're gonna get a lot of education and even the book, The Benzodiazepine Crisis, when you become a member. You will also have access to a newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of the new information coming out on benzodiazepines. Number two is to remember that therapy is actually first line treatment for anxiety and insomnia. And so it's best to emphasize those skills before pills. And when managing anxiety and or insomnia, cognitive behavior therapy is very useful. Uh, cognitive behavior therapy specifically for insomnia can also be helpful. Things like vagus nerve massage or vagus nerve activation, as well as things like mindfulness and grounding practices. These are all skills that your patient can use to help manage their anxiety and skills that a therapist can actually help teach them while they're in session. So definitely encourage your patients to seek out therapy interventions first. Which leads me to number three, which is specifically for primary care providers. I think it's very important that primary care providers stop prescribing benzodiazepines for patients for anxiety and insomnia because most of the prescriptions for benzodiazepines, in fact, over 50% of the prescriptions for benzodiazepines are made by primary care providers. They should really be given to the specialty of the psychiatrist and psychiatry only accounts for like 29% of the benzodiazepine prescriptions being made every year. And so it's important that we're handing this down to the specialty of the psychiatrist who can evaluate them to determine whether or not they really need the medication. And of course, offer therapy first. So when someone walks into your office talking about how anxious they are, how stressed out they are, or the fact that they're not sleeping, instead of writing a prescription for a medication, give them that referral to therapy, or if you really feel that they need medication, to psychiatry. Now, for psychiatrists and other providers who are prescribing benzodiazepines, when you believe that a benzodiazepine prescription is warranted, it is important that you emphasize this is for short-term use only, two to four weeks, and it's as needed use, not daily use. That needs to be emphasized that even though it says, you know, Q day or daily as needed, it's not to be used daily or consistently in that form. It's only to be used as needed. That needs to be emphasized because that will help to avoid or minimize this risk of the withdrawal phenomenon that can occur with these benzodiazepines. Now, of course, the exception to this rule would be if you're prescribing a benzodiazepine for someone with status epilepticus or severe seizure disorder that doesn't respond to anti-epileptic medications, then of course it would be warranted to use a benzodiazepine consistently and long-term. But what I'm talking about here is primarily for those anxiety conditions such as panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD, and even insomnia. All of those can actually be treated with therapy as first-line treatment instead of medication. And another thing I wanna mention is that if you do decide the benzo is the right medication for your patient and you wanna go ahead and prescribe it for them, emphasize short-term use, but also make sure you're giving them informed consent. And informed consent with benzodiazepine prescription includes telling them about all of these risks. 
And there's actually a form, a downloadable form that I'll make sure I have a link to in the description that goes over all of the risks that we talked about and so much more that your patients need to be aware of when being prescribed a benzodiazepine. So that way, if something does occur later on down the road that the patient can't say that they have never been warned about these risks for benzodiazepines. Because as a provider myself, I know that when patients come to me and they're persistent about needing a benzodiazepine, they've tried every single drug known to man to help their anxiety and they've done therapy, they've done it all, and they just want that benzodiazepine. I make sure that I give them this informed consent so that way, if down the road they end up having any of these issues, I can make sure to remind them that they were warned about those issues because they signed the detailed informed consent. And last but not least, it's important that you're listening to your patients. If your patients are coming into you and talking about suffering while they're on an anxiolytic medication like benzodiazepines, listen to what they're saying and have this top of mind that this could be a benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome or bind, etc. And then if you feel that this is what the person is suffering from, taper them off safely. I have a couple of videos that talk about tapering patients from benzodiazepines and other medications, but you can also look at the deep prescribing guidelines that I mentioned as well in some of those videos. And if you're not comfortable with that, then find a benzodiazepine cooperating provider that you can consult with that can help you through this process. And so that wraps up my video for today. I hope that you enjoyed it and hope that you can share this with other providers so that they can also be warned of the risk of benzodiazepines as well as know what they can do to be part of the solution. So have a wonderful day.